important opportunity for us to um, really understand uh, the work that's gone on. And if people can't join us at this moment in time, we want them to be able to have a look at it and, and share in our launch session separately. So that's all from me. Um, I didn't introduce myself properly, but um, I'm John Everson. I'm the Assistant Director for Adult Social Services in the Haringey, but um, responsible um, for the Haringey Borough Partnership in sort of the, the carers' work uh, with both Daria and Georgie, who you'll hear from later. Um, Hi. I'm going to hand over um, to Councillor James, who's going to give a few words of introduction and, and thanks to you all. So thank you from me for the moment. Hi, John. It's Patricia Charles up here. I'm really sorry to interrupt you. Um, yeah, uh, ha I haven't had the um, email with the uh, the stuff on it. Uh, I don't know why that was. Also, I'm no good at putting stuff into the chat, so I will be asking questions. Okay, well, we'll try and make sure that that email gets across to you. I know Dari was on that. And absolutely, it's really important. If you've got a question, uh, please do chime in. You can physically raise your hand if you want to do that uh, or, or jump in. So thanks for letting us know. Um, OK, I'm going to hand over now to, to Councillor James. Thanks, Councillor James. Uh, thanks. thanks, John. Um, um, first of all, a huge welcome to everybody. Um, it's great to hear that there are so many people on the call. Um, even if we can't all see one another and it feels a bit strange because we're not in the same room together. Um, I still think it's, it's just great that so many people have been able to join us this morning. Um, I would like to say a huge thank you before we do anything else to all the carers and partner organisations who helped develop this strategy. Uh, this is the first time carers have articulated their priorities in a local carer strategy and I think this marks a really genuine turning point in how we can work together to deliver real improvements. Um, and so I, you know, I feel really excited about being here today um, and about the work that's gone on in, in making this happen. Um, in response to carers telling us right at the outset that services they received felt quite just disjointed, uh, we've reached out to our partner organisations to take a real network approach to delivering this strategy. And I'm really hopeful that that will deliver lasting benefits. I kind of can't help uh, just remembering the last time we all met together um, in February at George Meehan House. And if I, you know, I remember correctly, there was a pretty lively debate at that point about what carers wanted and about what a carer's strategy should deliver. Um, it feels like another world now, uh, such a large gathering, uh, it just simply isn't possible, which is why we're obviously having to do this meeting on Zoom. But I think the messages uh, that we, we received from that meeting are reflected in the work that's gone on since then. Um, and you know, I think that's really positive. Uh, despite the huge challenges that we've all faced in the last few months because of COVID um, and the way in which many people's worlds have just been turned upside down, really, um, we have produced this strategy to get by working together. And I think that's a, a real achievement and I'm delighted to be here at the launch of it. If ever a carer strategy is needed to recognise, respect and support carers, now is the time. Um, I want to say a special thank you to all the carers for what you have managed to cope with during the last few months. As much as anything, the strategy is commitment to an acknowledgement of our carers and are wanting to continue to work together uh, to see real improvements. I'd like to thank also John Everson and all his team um, and special thanks in particular to Daria Polvina, uh, who's in, uh, running this show today, making sure we can all uh, see and hear one another um, and participate, but who as care of project managers really made sure that this strategy has actually happened um, despite the really difficult circumstances in which we've, we've had to work. Finally, the strategy is only the beginning 
we're looking forward you know, to developing an action plan on the back of this. Um, and you're really great that carers and our borough partners want to be actively involved in taking that work forward. I think it's really exciting. Um, and I think it marks a real change and step forward in our work with carers um, to develop you know, a better strategy or a real strat a new strategy um, and to make real improvements in the way we all work together um, you know, to make sure that this happens. So I'd like to thank everybody for being here. Um, I really look forward to hearing the other presentations um, and particularly to hearing from carers uh, this morning. Um, and just thank you for all the work that you've managed to do uh, even while being so busy, just coping with what COVID's thrown at us all. So thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy the morning. Thank you, Councillor James. And I think it's a really beautiful sentiment. And I think as we as we go uh, through today, we'll really get that appreciation of, of the sort of network of people, as you described it, who have been involved in all of this. But I suppose at the, at the heart of it, uh, uh, as Councillor James has said, this is about ensuring that, that carers in our communities in Harringay are absolutely seen as central um, to, to all of this and understanding how our strategy is going to support those people is incredibly important. So, so to help us to really get that sense, um, I wanted to introduce you um, to Claudine and Angie, who are going to be giving us a little sense of, of their, from their perspective as carers, um, as, as, as we go forward today. So I'm going to hand over to Claudine first, um, who hopefully will be able to, to give us her story of being a carer. Claudine. Yes, uh, I have been caring for my husband since now, I think 13 years old, 13 years, yeah. And at the beginning, just struggling by myself, it was not easy. But by the time I was introduced to just uh, to the support that the care carers can get, I think I saw very much improvement in the way I can continue with my caring role. And so I think supporting carers is a, a wonderful provision because most of us who just care for our loved one, sometimes we don't even think of ourselves. And when the community takes such an initiative to provide the much needed help for carers, really it does help because, and also we will say, it takes some burden off from the community. Because just think, if a carer were to go, for example, take some days off and the amount of, of time or money spent to care for the individuals, and if the carer were not supported and they will end up, for example, to need themselves the care, how much will be spent for both him or their hair and for the person they are caring for? So it's really a, a way to take a burden from the, the community. And I will say it's an investment, so it's really good. Although the, pro the process needs improvement, and this we can work together. Working together means involving carers, and that's what I appreciate. For example, that when carers are involved, uh, such as with the groups like the carer reference group, then they can discuss issues, as I do personally. I just get personal benefit in that you, you know, for example, where to get help, more information that you can get. Sometimes even for the person you are caring for, you, you get the support, you get information on that. And those discussions are necessary. Sometimes you may have issues. If you are isolated by yourself, you might not get the chance to have the, the, the answer to your concerns. But when we are as a group, then we can sometimes uh, just invite the service providers to answer our questions. And sometimes they direct you to uh, where you might need uh, the information or, and so on. And what I appreciate also at the beginning of the, the strategy is when they want to stay, set up the strategy that carer will invite it to give their view. Because sometimes those who decide, they don't even have a clue. 
what it means to care, what the carers are going through. And so if you uh, involve carers in the decision making, you will have a picture, a whole picture of what is needed and how it can benefit those who, 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 who need it. And so it's really good and I really hope, really hope that because the need has been identified that not only that the carers will continue to be involved to play their roles in terms, for example, like now it is set up, play a role to give feedback, play a role to give positive input that can be taken into consideration so that the, the service can be uh, involved. Actually, this is only good because being the recipient, they can tell what will work or what is not working and why it is not working. So, and also if they can be involved to monitor the implementation of the, the, the strategy, that will help. That's my hope. And I, I'm really glad that eventually uh, maybe the concerns of carers have been heard and uh, that now we have started a new, a new chapter and we will continue, as the councillor said it, this is the beginning and we hope that really working together, we can achieve something. Thank you, Claudine, that was beautiful. And um, it really demonstrates why it's so important that this is led by carers. Um, I wanted to hand over to Angie now, if you're on the call, Angie, and, and, and hear a few words from you. Oh, I done it right. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, hi, Angie, we can hear you. Oh, great, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, John. New to this. Hello, um, hello everyone. Um, thank you very much for inviting me um, this morning to the launch of the Haringey Carer Strategy. Um, as a member of the working group who have helped to shape the strategy, it was such a worthy project to be a part of. Um, I would like to hope that once carers get the chance stroke time to read it and for it to be truly embedded in practice by Haringey Council and their partners, carers should carers should start to see actions from the strategy being implemented and changes taking shape then all um, then all our hard work would be um, worthwhile and as for hopes for the strategy in the future well i would like to see it become a beacon of best practice a trusted document referred to by not just carers but by all concerned as a carer of over 25 years plus, I know how important it is to access help and advice quickly. That means knowing where to go, who to talk to, and what you can expect when you get there. The HCS will help that process to be achieved. Many carers juggle balls in the air every day, trying not to let them fall, but if they do, we fall too. I was recently asked as a carer what might my typical day look like. Well, if I had one, I would be able to tell you, but no one day as a carer for me is the same. I care for my two daughters. One is 35 and the other is 29. So the oldest has autoimmune illnesses. Um, she has unclassified connective tissue disease, fibromyalgia, Sjogren's, Raynaud's, erythema multiforme with Stephen Johnson syndrome and, and anxiety and depression. My youngest daughter has bowel and stomach issues. Um, she has uh, uh, to deal with a lot of um, laxatives and enemas. She has complications of UTIs, kidney infections, fatigue and depression. Um, my third who I care for is also a close family member. He is under the bipolar spectrum with social behavior issues with self neglect. So 40% of my day is from, is from my aspect as a mental health support worker. Um, the rest is broken down into being a nurse, admin, pain level checker, um, deciding whether it's a 111 day, a 999 day, or a GP, or just staying at home and being an ordinary day. Um, it's, I also do community work, um, so I'm a tenant advocate as well. So 
I have a vast range of um, interests, shall we say. My progression to carer was slow, as even now professionals will think of me as a parent and not as a full carer, thus missing out on vital information regarding my caree that I can give them, which is a shame and it's very frustrating for the girls and I at times. Um, I read somewhere, and I think it was Carers UK, um, that carers save the economy £132 million a year. That's around £20,000 per carer. Also, 6,000 people a day take on carers' responsibilities. That's equivalent to 2 million people a year. 58% of those are women and 42 are men. So the role of carer must be respected and valued, not just by local government, but central too. And we must be properly funded. We must, however, not forget the young carers. They tackle the job as carers or as we do, but also they are growing up and doing exams, etc. But as we speak, I do understand Harrogate Council are putting together a young carer strategy. This is a wonderful to hear, and I, for one, will look forward to seeing the finished paper. Um, before I close, um, may I take this opportunity to thank Daria, as I think Councillor James has all, already said. Um, Daria has been a star, and um, I just wanted to praise her uncontrolled. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Um, and can I also um, thank the uh, other officers, um, Georgia, John, um, for their hard work and enthusiasm for the project in times that are, are none of these really enthusiastic things. But thank you very much for allowing me to tell my story and good luck to the strategy and thank you again. Thank you, Angie. Um, what a powerful testament to what it means to be a, to be a carer. And I think it's, it's understanding that individual journey that, that carers go on their individual circumstances that makes this so, so important. Um, I was really struck by some of the points you made around um, this strategy becoming a trusted document for, for everybody, feels incredibly important, and that it, it helps to shape that sort of beacon of best practice. So thank you again for sharing your story and, and, and Claudine too. I think um, obviously without your stories and without your commitment, to both the people that you care for and love, but also to supporting us in Harringay to, to develop a strategy alongside other carers. Um, you know, we just could not do that without you. So thank you very much. Um, we are gonna give a little bit of context and actually, Angie, you touched on some of this. So, uh, you know, you're doing my job for me, which is always fantastic. Um, uh, we're just gonna give you a little bit of context to, to why it's so important uh, to have a strategy in place. Um, but also to understand, um, you know, the journey that we've been on and the steps that we've been on uh, in terms of, of getting to where we are today. So I'm not sure whether we're able to um, move forward with the, the slides and, and, and go to the um, slide for me, because actually I can't remember all of it. <laughs> um, so I think, as I said, Angie's already touched on some of these points, but but what's really important to recognise, I think, and some of the key things for, for us particularly, are that we know that there are between 20 and 27,000 carers in Haringey, but actually we don't know that many of them. Um, and actually we want to know who carers are in Haringey and we want to make sure that carers get the support that they need. So that again is why it's so incredibly important that we have a strategy with our partners that helps us to identify and support carers at the right time. Often it's too late if we're waiting to things, you know, for things when they're starting to go wrong or the situations become so complex that it's unmanageable. So we, we absolutely need to work in that partnership way to help to identify and support carers. Um, we know that we absolutely need to respect the role of carers as we've described today. Um, and one of the things that we, we, we've used historically to, to understand whether we're doing all that we can do is the carer's strategy for adult social, not the carer's strategy, the carer's survey for adult social care. And what that described to us really is that people were feeling that they weren't involved and part of discussions in terms of 
helping support the person that they care for, that they indicated that they weren't often as involved in those discussions and felt um, that they wanted to be part of that more. So we knew back in 2018, 19, and if not for much longer than that, that actually these were areas that we really needed to improve on. And carers have been telling us this, but actually what the strategy helps us to do is to really start to pull that together in a way that we can uh, put some actions in place to address those issues. Um, and the support that people feel that they're receiving in Haringey um, was under 30% under felt that they were um, extremely or very satisfied with the support and services they got. So um, we know that we can do better. This is below the national and statistical neighbours uh, within London. So where the average is, is, is probably about 33 to 35%, still not good enough in, in, in our opinion. And we wanna make sure when we get to our carer strategy um, um, launch and sort of roll out that when we do the survey again, um, and it will be next year now, um, it's a national strategy that, that we start to see some of those shoots of improvement, um, obviously in what are very difficult times at the moment. Uh, again, Angie touched on this point, the sort of incredibly significant um, financial and economic contribution that carers make to our society. So we think of England alone, if we were replacing the care that carers provide, then we know that that's going to be a replacement care cost of between 54 and 86 billion pounds a year. So that is huge and really can't be underestimated. Um, so we know that we need to identify more carers, respect their expertise and support them better to prevent those cared for relationships from breaking down, to ensure that carers can continue as long as possible uh, in their caring role and to relieve the pressure, obviously, on the health and social care system from that huge contribution that carers make into the situation. So there's some of the, the sort of key areas. Um, that tell us why it's important, other than those really powerful stories that carers are telling us. Um, and Georgie's gonna, gonna take you through the journey that we've been on to help address that. Hello, uh, right, I've got my camera on. Sorry, I'm not so used to doing um, Microsoft Teams. Hi everybody, morning. Um, Somebody has managed to draw a line on this presentation. I'm not entirely sure how they've done it, and I don't know how to undo it. So I'm really sorry um, if anybody does know how to get rid of this line. I think Stephanie did it. Anyway, um, so please ignore. Uh, more, more, more technically savvy than I am. So um, I'm just going to give you a run through a couple of slides. This is uh, relating to the timeline of the carer strategy. So I think, as Councillor James said, it feels like a really long time ago, but in February, we had that large event in George Meehan House, which was kicking off the strategy development. And even then we were sat in these sort of tables, which is what I'll go on to describe in the next slide, on these sort of key care uh, priority areas. Um, and, and these areas have sort of defined and, and formed the structure of the strategy all the way through. Um, it was kind of hard to believe that actually less than sort of about two weeks later, we would end up in a kind of full lockdown situation. So during the COVID lockdown of sort of um, March through to about May, we were doing uh, still quite a lot of work with carers. Um, some of you may have received a carer check-in call and they were conducted by council staff, uh, staff from the clinical commissioning groups, NHS, and uh, some of the voluntary sectors at Carers First and others were, were providing those calls. Um, and they were checking in with carers just to see how they were doing, seeing if they needed some access to connected communities, access to food, medication, really just essential support, whether a social work assessment needed, whether, whether um, something more um, urgent was needed from the NHS. So I think that they actually, the feedback we've had that they were incredibly helpful and during that process, during those conversations, we ended up having an awful lot of conversations with individual carers who maybe didn't come to the original event. And that has helped to shape the, the strategy about the sorts of help and support that people needed, the importance of a plan. Um, when sort of lockdown sort of lessened over the summer, we kind of picked up the strategy again um, and carried on meeting with a carers working group where some carers are involved um, and, and continue to uh, consult with carers, mainly via email. Uh, and I think the message from carers were, again, Councillor James said at the beginning, 
now more than ever we need to have a carer strategy it needs to be really relevant to the times that we live in even if it needs a slight redrafting in a year or so's time when covid you know hopefully is a thing of the past we really need a response to this um so we got back busy we've been mainly working virtually and online um and developing and sending around drafts of the strategy um and here we are today in october launching it which is really exciting um, I think for the next steps, really from October sort of up to February, we're going to be working with all of our partners, again, led by carers on developing the action plan. So really getting into the detail of what does this mean? What is the change? What is the ask? Um, which would be really exciting. And we would hope that sort of around February time, we will be able to have this piece of work completed along with the young carers, because young carers had a very distinct set of needs um, that we wanted to capture. I think we thought if we added the young carers into this, document they, they, their needs, which are quite different, would be lost. So hopefully we'll be able to have the sort of the joint piece uh, heading into February for the Health and Wellbeing Board. Um, so, move the next slide down. Okay. So these are the sort of five key areas that I mentioned we, we, we were discussing even back in February. So your caring role was really around emphasizing the need to recognize, identify and support carers in their role and their access to information and advice. Um, the idea of being an expert by experience is a theme through many of these five areas, but particularly gets quite a lot of talk, um, gets quite a lot of sort of airing within this section. The second um, outcome for carers is around your health and well-being. We know that caring can take its toll on you physically, but especially mentally. Um, so this is around how we can support and, um, you know, help prevent, maintain, improve your own personal health and well-being. Uh, the third section is around housing and managing at home. It's around ensuring carers have a safe, appropriate and habitable housing, and particularly thinking about how their housing could be adapted to support themselves, look a bit more in the caring role using either assistive technology or um, adaptations, but it also covers um, some, other, some other things as well. Um, the fourth section is around finances, benefit and debt. We know that caring can take a financial toll on many of you and then that can also have an impact on your mental well-being, a sense of stress. So this section is uh, focusing on maximising your income, uh, some thoughts about employment, managing debt and access to good quality and independent legal advice, which many carers told us was really key. Um, and then the last section was around having a life of your own. So actually stepping away from the caring and the relationship with the a person that you care for and thinking about what it is that you need to nurture for your own sense of well-being, whether that be employment, activities, relationships, um, what, what, whatever it is that you need to, to, to keep going and trying to make the space in your life to, to, to sort of develop and nurture that. So I'm going to now hand over to Beverly Tucker who will talk to you a bit more about the partnership approach. Just going to double check um, Beverly's on the line um, and and just um, while we're waiting to, to check. Hello, out, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hi, Beverly. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me to say a few words uh, this morning at this really important launch. Um, as has been said, Claire, carers have led the way with this strategy. And that was absolutely the right starting point for us to have. But what I want to just say a few words about is really the approach we've taken as uh, involving our carers in co-producing, not just with ourselves as a council, but also with our borough partners. And I've been around in Haringey uh, for many, many years. And I think it's a real signal of the progress we have made, where we've been able to listen to the voices of our, of, of our carers who have told us, well, actually, they've found interaction with us very disjointed and to work with us to respond together as a partnership. So this first slide actually just reflects um, the sort of the important partners that have come together to work together with carers in co-producing uh, the strategy. Now, it's not a done deal. Uh, we're very clear that it's a continuous journey and we really pledge to continue to support the co-produced nature of the way we have been working to date. So a little bit about the borough partnership. 
uh, from my sort of reflections. I, I think you can look at it as, uh, we can use terms like integrated systems, but for me, the crux of it is really about how we forge better relationships to enable us to respond to the issues that care is uh, uh, raised. And the really important way we can do that is to be like-minded by coming together, talking together, co-producing with our carers. There've been a lot of input, not just externally with these partners, but also across the council, because it's not just about social care. Uh, John said earlier about the significant number of carers in Haringey that are not known to social care, but actually they interface with housing, they interface with other aspects of our services. Uh, and it's important that we come together so that we have that collective approach to actually addressing the issues that are raised. I must say in terms of the borough partnership, uh, which uh, this slide represents, that there's been overwhelmingly positive response uh, in terms of the, uh, the work with carers. And they've actually pledged their continued support and really signed up to the vision of Haringey Carers Strategy. Basically, that all carers of all ages are recognised, respected and supported. And I think, I know I've only got a few minutes, but I think it's really important for me just also to highlight the mission statement of Haringey Adult Carers. And that's really about ensuring that anyone who provides unpaid care and support to someone else is able to identify themselves and be recognised as a carer be listened to regarding the care provided for the person they care for, to be supported to continue to be a carer, to be supported to have a life of their own, to be supported to maintain or improve their own health and well-being, and to be provided with helpful information, advice and guidance. We have all signed up to that pledge, and I really look forward to continuing this journey uh, with you. So if we go, go to the next slide, please. I think what we're trying to uh, illustrate in this slide is really, so how, how will it, how will it uh, look differently? Uh, first of all, it's important to, to acknowledge that this is just the beginning of a journey. Uh, as I've said, we've committed to the carer strategy vision. We will continue within the borough partnership to actually discuss, promote, and listen to the voices the really important voices and stories of people like Claudine and, and Angie that we've heard this morning. And we've got a way of organizing how we do that. Uh, you will have heard of the age well, live well and start well groups. Uh, uh, and we uh, agreed that all the work, the carers work should be embedded within the discussions and the plans that these various groups actually uh, uh, lead on. And we, we are really committed to an agile delivery of, of, of this work, but we also need to be flexible as we go forward. I think carers in particularly have uh, been at the receiving end of this sort of really significant adverse impact of COVID-19. And we have to you know, continue to uh, bear that in the forefront of our thinking, to keep on listening and understanding and responding to the voices and stories that we hear, hear from carers, particularly at these very difficult times. So in terms of what this might look like uh, for the, uh, in practice on the ground, what will it look like for carers? Uh, this slide there represents just a few sort of vignettes about how we see this translating um, into um, practice on the ground. So for example, connected communities that I'm sure all of you will be aware of, uh, and that came into uh, a great effect during our a period of COVID. We've got some feedback here that they've it, uh, enabled and supported our carers to become more confident online uh, by giving that sort of hands-on support. It's totally recognized that there's a significant le level of digital uh, exclusion uh, in Haringey. Uh, and not more so than with carers. So having that, that, that sort of service on the ground to support and connect carers, I think is really, really important. And I, I just want to pick up another uh, 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 pr a practical example. Housing, I think in my experience has been the sort of the, the top issue that actually uh, comes to us through uh, challenges that carers uh, are, are presented with. And what working closely 
as a unit across the council and with partners. We are able to hear the stories from carers. We're able to respond on the ground. We're able to introduce uh, 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 tools such as assistive technology and adaptations uh, within people's houses to enable them to have that sort of more uh, appropriate caring experience. And just a word about some of our, the work of some of our partners. I'd like to highlight uh, North Middlesex where the carer's passport takes some of the stress of hospital appointments, for example. Uh, and I think that, you, you know, that the other area that I'll just uh, finish with, having a life of your own as a carer cannot be uh, overemphasized. And sometimes it's those little things and those little breaks and those little opportunities that make all the difference to, in, in terms of a carer being able to continue with their caring responsibilities. Uh, I'm going to stop there because I'm conscious that I'll, I'll probably run out of my time, but I think this uh, uh, slide just is a suggestion of some of the ways that we've been able to do things differently. And hopefully in a year's time, we will be able to expand the light landscape of examples we're able to share with you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Bernie. And I think that's really important stuff. It really demonstrates the power of the health and social care system coming together uh, and committing to working with carers going forward to deliver the ambitions of this strategy. The power really is about us all coming together with one shared vision about where we want to get to. And some of the description of, of what that should help us to deliver for carers, I think is really important. So Beverly's given us that sense of um, the sort of borough partnership um, relationship and how that's going to work. Um, I'm now going to introduce you to Kelly Dorrington. She's the Head of Operations and Development at Citizens Advice. And Kelly has been a great critical friend of the carer's strategy as we develop that and is here to tell us a little bit about the kind of entitlement that carers uh, can get and the kind of support that Citizens Advice can offer to carers. Um, and if Kelly, if you're ready, I will hand over to you. Hi. Um, I've, when I was asked to set this up, I was asked to talk about the service that we have. Um, so I've done a little bit of both, but mainly just how you can access our services at Citizens Advice Haringey. Um, Derry is going to put some presentation slides up for you so you can see some of the things that I've um, talked about um, and there is a part at the end um, where I'll talk about some of the entitlement and things that um, you may be able to get help with. Um, one of the things I'd ask if you've got any questions I'm happy to answer them during the um, presentation but I'm also happy if you put them into the chat and I'll come back later and I will answer them as we go along. Okay, so Citizens Advice Haringey. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please, Daria? Um, this is a quote from our CEO, Daniel Blake. We want to make no wrong door the norm for advice services across the borough. We've learned so many things during lockdown that will help us achieve this. It isn't an either or a between digital and face to face. It's how we use them both to offer personalised service to the people who need us across the borough. Many of you might not know, but during lockdown, we ended our face-to-face um, -face service and we started delivering um, our help on the telephone. So we are a lead partner for Haringey Advice Partnership. Um, that's along with Vibrance and Public Voice. We're working from home remotely um, and to get access to our um, advice line, it's 0300 330 1187. It's open nine to five, Monday to Friday, and it's open to anyone. Sometimes you might have to phone two or three times to be able to get through, but it's actually worth it because we can help in a lot of the areas that you've touched on today. We go to the next one, Varia. Carers are those they and those they care for come from a variety of reasons depending on the circumstances. Being a carer can affect many parts of your life. And our approach at Citizens Advice Haringey is to identify what help you need. Often a carer will come in and doesn't identify, which means that we miss a lot of the help and support that we may be able to give them. So one of the things that I'd ask you to do is identify yourself as a carer. And if you're not sure if you're a carer, even if you're doing the most remote things, just talk about it, discuss it, and we'll try and help you identify ways that we can help and support you going forward. 
we in the next slide, please, Daria. Um, in the period between March 24th, that should be September the 30th, because I've updated it, we supported 5,272 people across Arangay. Okay, next slide. 60% um, of the clients that we see have no long-term health problems or disabilities, but that means that 40% of the people we see do. Um, and that can range from multiple sclerosis, um, mental health problems, um, to adults with learning difficulties, um, stroke victims. And um, we go out into the community and walk into Dan's hospital to help those who have long-term mental health problems. We're also at Mind and Haringey. But what we really ask for is that you identify yourself and what your condition is, because actually, even though you're a carer, there may be some support and help that you can get along the way too. Do you want to go to the next one, Daria, please? We supported those 5,272 people with over 7,997 issues. That means that it wasn't just housing, it wasn't just benefits, it was more than one thing. So when we do come in, when you do come and see us, make sure that you raise all of the issues that you may have. It may mean that we have to make an appointment and see you a second or an even third time, but we will try and address everything and all issues with you. Do you want to go to the next one, Daria? Below are, are some of the 7,997 issues we supported. We had 1,753 on universal credits, and that includes the caring element. We had 1,475, and that includes carers allowance, PIP, um, attendance allowance, um, and bereavement benefits. We've seen housing for 1,317. Um, one of the things I'd raise, and I'll speak about it again with housing, is check your tenancy agreement as a carer. If you move into somebody's home to care for them and caring ends, it may affect your housing. Um, we've done 6,807 employment issues, um, 761 debt issues, immigration and asylum issues, 283, and others is 506. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Um, the highest number of benefits and universal credit inquiries are about we've received are about making initial claims. So that's 5,000, sorry, 550 clients, new benefit claims were made in the past six months. Can we go to the next slide? Um, again, we're a diverse service that we offer help to people of all ages. We've even got somebody who's um, didn't come up here, but was 101, was our oldest client. And our youngest client was 15. Um, and as you can see, there's a range of ages between it. Predominantly, we are in the middle age ranges. So um, anything from about 25 to 60. Um, however, we do see older residents and we do see younger residents too. Can you go to the next one, please? Um, the, unfortunately, there are areas of deprivation across the service and across the borough. Um, we generally see Tottenham, Green, Tottenham Hale, Bruce Grove, Northumberland Park as high areas of deprivation. And we see a lot of clients from those areas. Some of them are wealthy areas like Highgate, Fortis Green and Stroud Green. We don't see as many people from them. It doesn't mean that there's no need. It doesn't mean that there isn't care going on there. It just means that they have access to other services that they prefer to use than us. Often they're paid services. Can we go to the next screen? Um, in this period, income gain for clients has been Five, well, just over half a million pound for Haringey residents in the last six months. Um, and this is an under, under representation because not everybody comes back to tell us what they've claimed and where they've been successful. Can we go to the next one? As part of our response to COVID-19 and the long-term impact on face-to-face, -face, we have developed the telephone service. We're also now offering an uh, email service um, and we're developing web chat. We've also got a little robot called Carl on our website um, and he will um, lead you to where advice is if you actually want to go in um, and seek support that way. We're still looking at different ways of helping people. <laughs> we're still looking at different ways of helping people um, and we're developing things like our Zoom chats and, that, and things, but we haven't found clients are really that um, keen to go online. We sort of, been delivering video conferencing so we have done things like scam awareness with public voice and vibrance we have also supported some of the food bank networks 
and we're setting up some training for the volunteers there. We are also attending um, and delivering training on things that are like domestic violence and domestic abuse, um, particularly as it affects people within the home. Can we go to the next one? We've launched a brand new website, which is um, regularly monitored and updated. We've got blogs from our staff and volunteers, um, which is a way of keeping you updated with the work that we're carrying out. And we've recruited some new social media volunteers. So we're now using Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube as means of engagement. So you don't need to just go through the traditional methods. If you post something on our Twitter feed, we will try and get back in touch with you. But please don't phone there and say, please give me your problem. I can't answer your problem on Twitter. Um, and it has happened. Can I go to the next one, please? Our research and campaigns team have begun collecting evidence on issues around debt, housing and food poverty. It's hoped the evidence will contribute towards the report, like the carer strategy, to be presented to decision makers across Haringey, as well as contributing to national policy, social policy changes. The idea is to improve the support available for who are affected by issues outlined. Currently, we're working on discretionary housing payments um, and how these can be increased. Um, in line with other boroughs in the in London to try and support people with the housing costs that are not met with their housing benefit or the universal credit housing element. Go to the next one. Right. So this is the bit about the carers. So one of the things that I think is really key and critical for all the carers that I come across and I come as as a, a carer was that you should need to get a carers assessment to look at what you need to have to enable you to continue in your job. Being a carer is a second job. It's not a lifestyle choice. It's not something that you do to help out somebody. It is a second job, whether it's two hours a week or 30 hours a week, or it's completely full time. You are taking on an extra role in your life. If you wait until you're at, on your knees before you get your carer's assessment, they will put support in, to, in place to help you, but it will mean that you have a, a long and anxious and stressful period where you're not getting support. If you go and you get your carer's assessment before you're at that critical point, it should help prevent you actually getting there. So asking for a carer's assessment is really, really critical. When you do get a carer's assessment, you need to go to the social services department. They will interview you. Normally it's face to face, but at the moment it might be on the telephone. They will um, look at how much time you spend caring and what support you need to continue on with that caring. They will look at the tasks that you do. So they're looking at the things. So it's worth thinking about whether or not you're getting somebody washed and dressed to get up, whether you're doing a bit of shopping for somebody, whether you're doing the washing, whether you have to live with somebody. So it's actually help you. You need to help them identify what help you need by knowing exactly what it is that you do and what support that you're providing. Um, you need to book in time for yourself. So you need to look at that and you need to ask them to look at that and you need to consider your personal safety. That's not just about getting adaptations and support for helping with lifting and carrying. It's also about getting time off as appropriate. And it's also about dealing with situations when you may be in an abusive relationship. Taking time, taking, can you go back a bit? Sorry. Um, taking time off um, as a carer um, is vitally important. Like any other job, you need to have time off and days off. If you're, in an if you're an employee, talk to your employer, let him know that you're a carer. He should be able to give you some flexible working and he should be able to give you take time off in an emergency. It's critical that you need to actually do this before you get into an emergency situation. Um, if he decides or she decides not to give it to you, that can be discriminatory and we can actually help you support you to tackle any employment employer's feedback that's negative. You need to look at your budget. Often carers rely on the income for those they care on because they have a household income that will include the benefits for the disabled person. And you might be actually managing the whole household income as a whole. So when you stop caring, that can be financially devastating when the responsibility end. Caring ends for a number of reasons. Some people go into hospital, some people go into school, some people go into um, live independently. But your budgeting is absolutely critical. 
things that you need to consider is carer's allowance. Are you entitled to carer's allowance? If you're claiming universal credit, you won't get carer's allowance. They will take it off you pound for pound, but you should get the caring element included in your carer's in universal credit payment. And that's £162 a week. Sorry, a month. It's £162 a month. If there's two people in your household caring for two separate people, you can get two lots of um, carer's element in your universal credit payment. Um, one of the areas to be concerned with is if somebody is on disability, uh, severe disability premium, that might be removed from the benefits if you claim a carer's allowance. So you may need to have a talk to the person that you're caring for because they could effectively lose £50 a week from their caring um, income, from their disability income. Uh, you cannot get carer's element and long term health support with universal credit. So, again, they will give you the higher amount, but they won't give you both. Um, you need to consider becoming a appointee for the person that you're caring for. You cannot talk to the DWP about benefits issue for somebody you're caring for unless you've either got a power of attorney or you're their appointee. And it really is critical that you actually make that decision with the person you care for, particularly if it looks like they may have a degenerative disease or something like Alzheimer's, where they might be able to make decisions for themselves, but at a future date, they might not be able to do so for any longer. Um, you need to look at other help that might be available. So you need to consider utility bills. There are grants and trusts available to help you with your utility and water bills. Um, you might not be, um, you may be eligible for TV license payments um, and you could get cold weather payment for help in the um, carer in the, the winter months. There is other energy support that you may be able to get, but it, the list is on endless and I'm just rambling on it now. Um, look at your tenancy agreement. One of the biggest and saddest issues that we have with people coming in at the end of their caring responsibility is where they don't have a right to stay in the home. Particularly if it's an adult child caring for a parent living in the family home. If you're living in a council house and you've never been under tenancy, you may be asked to leave that property at the end of your caring. People are devastated by that and they can be left homeless. So it makes sense to look at the tenancy agreement in the early stage and put some preparation in place for the time when your caring responsibility ends. Um, one of the other things to look at is your relationships. Are they healthy? Um, you can get help if you're in an abusive relationship, but there's a number of ways that carers are particularly susceptible to abusive relationship. One, people often think that carers are abusing their position of trust because they have um, I don't taken over the financial control to the person that they're caring for. Brothers and sisters um, and siblings often comment and I've had people come in and want to challenge the spending of a carer. So make sure that you have open and robust conversations with other family members. You could um, be a, a victim of abuse by the person that you're caring for. So uh, sometimes we see people who were already in abusive relationships or sometimes the um, illness has had such a devastating effect on the person's life that they become abusive within that relationship abuse is not just physical it can be emotion it could be financial um it can be coercion and um, so there's a number of different ways that you may be in an abusive relationship and not always recognize it um and the third one is sometimes abusive partners will use your caring responsibilities as a control over you so if you're con if you're caring for an adult child you may have a partner who is being coercive over you um, and maybe keeping you away from that child um, to be tend to their needs um, or using it as a way of keeping you within the relationship um, and wearing you down. So again, all of these things can be suited out and you can get help, but you've got to step forward first. Thanks, Gavin. I'm going to give you 30 seconds of a break, Kelly. We're running out of time a little bit. Is that OK? Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, well, it, finally, I'd just say look to the future again. Look at your housing, look at power of attorney, look at becoming an appointee, look at your finances, look at the will, um, not just yours, but also the parent, that, person that you care for, and go and seek the support that you need. Caring is a huge job, and make sure that you treat it as such. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. That was really comprehensive, and I think what it really demonstrates, you really shone a light on the 
the absolute real practical support that's available out there, the practical support information, um, highlighting the importance of the carer's assessment, I thought particularly helpful for us. And I think, again, it demonstrates that there is a lot of really, really good practice um, going on, but actually um, making sure people can access that at the right time in the right place at, you know, is, is going to be really key. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Linda Rowlandson, who's the head of patient experience at Whittington Health. Linda's going to be telling us a little bit about how Whittington Health is putting the carer's vision into practice. And if we just go on mute if we're not already. Hello, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Is that fine? Yeah. Um, I'm, as John has kindly said, I'm Linda Rollins. I'm Head of Patient Experience at Whittington Health. And um, I'm really grateful and thankful to be asked to be um, um, involved in the, in the launch of this carer strategy. I think it's a fantastic strategy and it's fantastic to see so many partners come together in Haringey um, to put this together. Um, I thought it would be really uh, just helpful just to talk in terms of um, um, Whittington Health, a little bit about who we are and, and what services we, we cover, so which, which carers we, we, we work very closely with, um, we hope, um, and to then say what we're actually doing, at the, what we are doing at the moment to help us, as I think probably the speakers all along have said, this is a work in progress, this is bringing partnerships together. Um, and then looking, so then I want to just um, end by looking at what's the work that we know that we need to develop much further. Um, so just to start off, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, um, as Whittington Health, we of course have the, the hospital, Whittington Hospital. Um, and um, we also um, work, uh, run um, adult services and children's services in the community. So district nursing, our um, allied health professionals, so such as speech and language, um, physios, occupational therapy, and then our children and young people services from school nursing, health visiting, community pediatrics, and again, our, our, our specialist therapists. Um, so we have a long, um, you know, a long history of working together with carers. And I think one of the first things we realize when we, especially what we learn in the community is that um, we, we don't, we, we um, families um, don't just fit neatly into adult services and children's services. Quite often we can have, um, our health visitors might be supporting a young or our school nurses, a young carer um, who's also, um, and then there's also into family dynamics where um, adults are, 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 who have children are also supporting um, their elderly parents. Um, so it's 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 fluid, and it's how we do some sort of integrated, joined up working together with our colleagues in the local authority and, and voluntary sector. Um, I think we we do have our own uh, our carers policy here at Whittington, um, and the. Um, what we've tried to do and make sure that we've already embedded, um, as I say, it's a work in progress, I think, and, and this comes uh, back to one of, the, um, one of the priorities in the strategy, which is great, which is about how we train our staff so that they understand you know, how, how, um, in, how we value and important um, um, our carers are together with patients and that it's a partnership and that we really do recognize that um, carers are the, 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 expert, the experts um, in the, um, the care of the patient. Um, we, do, we do ask now that, um, that we do log and make, take, put the care, our carers' details in, in sort of patients' medical notes, and that these are also flagged. Um, and that we, we do, um, really sort of help our staff sort of work towards um, um, ensuring that the voice of the carer and patient together where possible are heard um, hand in hand. Um, we do have um, to support, we have done quite a lot of work um, in the community with our um, young carers. Um, our paediatric services have developed um, um, carers passports and ID cards for young carers so that um, 
um, and that they are tapped into local authority support um, for our young carers. Um, um, we are encouraging carers' passports and um, we know that there's an ongoing piece of work that we, that we need to do and on the back of this launch we're hoping that we will do um, some um, communications again around this that brings in our own um, um, policy and strategy that we're reviewing at the moment on the back of this which is which is great so that we're all aligned that'd be fantastic um, it's also we know how important it is to recognize um, you know that um, the, the what to what extent um, so that we have a really good idea um, and working with carers um, to help them recognize the extent and involvement and commitment and 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 quite often as I'm sure has been said already um, to record to help carers recognize that they that they are carers and they are entitled to additional um, support and um, to be involved in the care of, um, of the patients that we see um, through health services. Um, we, um, we want to um, make sure that the care plans that we devise, whether that's in the community or hospital settings, um, wherever possible, um, that that's done um, in negotiation and collaboration with both patient and carers together. Um, we, we want this to be a partnership um, very much with, with our healthcare. Um, we do have a we have a carers leaflet um, that we again it's about making sure that our staff are aware um, that this is available and that they should present this to carers when they either come into the hospital or um, what the work we're doing in, in community settings um, and we are signed up to a young carers charter um, as part of our policy um, um, for all, all carers. Um, and um, in terms of support, I think um, I think it's always important to make sure that um, um, we don't make assumptions about the, the level of, of support and care that our carers um, can put in. I think we um, um, we we it's about understanding the dynamics um, and sort of holistic assessments that we do of, 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 fam of family. Um, and and uh, and and close friends who may be carers. Um, I think it's um, um, a lot of work that has been done to sort of again comes back to the um, the level of, of what's appropriate and what's um, um, what we can do to support um, so that um, many carers don't feel overwhelmed and overburdened. And I, I think um, we're revising our. our care as a policy at the moment and we're reviewing how um, we're self-assessing ourselves against nice guidelines um, 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 for the support of carers because I think we've learned an awful lot over COVID I think uh, over the over the pandemic particularly around um, April to, to July um, and as we prepare for this uh, second wave um, we've learned an awful lot about um, um, some of the, the, the difficulties that arise when um, you know, we've had to, for example, fall back on, on visiting um, in, in the hospitals and the impact that has on, on patient outcomes as well as um, the emotional and, and well-being and support for, for carers as well and families. Um, um, we are, we, in our, we, we very much um, have pledged to support the John's campaign and um, we have been very careful as where we can so even during where we've had no visiting for example during the covid one of the important things has been to where we where we where we possibly can is to invite um, a main carer in in to support um, um patients with with dementia um it's been a very difficult time of course um when things have changed around the hospital um and, and again in the community as well um, so, um, and that's with people with dementia, but also we've also applied um, the sort of exemptions um, for, for people with learning disabilities as well, that they, it's very important that they have their, um, have their people closest to them and their and carers uh, with them um, when they can. Um, we also have a separate carer survey, um, um, which we really want to um, sort of hear from, from carers and we want to, value, to understand 
how things are going, are the things that we have put in place, has it, we have a policy, yes, but how much is it filtering out to, to our wards and our staff? And we would um, welcome and, and ask carers, do ask, ask about the survey. Um, um, so I just, um, I think that's just, uh, just a summary. There's a lot of, there's an awful lot of work going, that is going on both in the hospital and the community um, to support carers. I think we, um, we are continuing on a journey of, of learning and, and what we can do to, to either um, support and to also signpost into other services that, that, that are available to support carers. Um, I, um, we are on a journey and there are an awful lot of things that are going on that the different services will be doing. So district nursing, um, our acute wards in the hospital. Um, I've been asked, and it's a recent thing, to, to take an overview. Um, so to, to pull together um, and, and work, uh, continue so to work in partnerships so that we do make sure that what we are doing aligns with, with Haringey's overall strategy. Um, I think just moving on to the things that we know that we do need to um, perhaps work, work much more. So these the aspects of the, um, the, strategy, um, the strategy that we know um, we want to move forward with and look forward to working with everybody on this. Is, is about how we support um, the carers' health needs. I think that's a that's excellent. I'm really glad to see that in the strategy um, because we know that again, it's about you know it isn't just around our patients. We know that our patients, care in families, and the carers and themselves um, need to. We need to look after health as well. Um, um, and and how do we do that and, and help and make sure that. Um, um, those um, health needs are assessed and how we can support um, through our primary care, through our community services and the hospital. Um, and also, um, I think um, absolutely welcome um, the part of the strategy which talks about helping carers adjust to changes in caring and, and, and particularly when it, uh, sadly, when uh, patients die and there's then that's the big changes that I think have already been talked about probably. Um, around when you've cared for somebody for a long time, what that then means for you, for, for some for the, um, the carers and, and people um, who've been looking after patients um, very closely, what that means. So we, we are revising and reviewing our bereavement policy as well. And again, some of this has come out of um, um, the learning from COVID. Of course, that's been a very, very heartbreaking and some very difficult situations um, have occurred over the past months, but we want to learn um, from that and and to learn from you and to learn from from, from carers especially because um, which um, absolutely is around being the um, the um, experts in experts um, um, in in their pa in patients care um, I think I'll finish there um, and uh, welcome any questions thank you thank you Linda that's really helpful and it's fantastic to get that real sense of what Whittington Health are doing as part, you know, as part of the partnership approach that we're taking to the carer strategy. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's fundamental, isn't it, that, that as partners, we understand the roles and responsibilities, the areas of improvement and build on what's working now. Um, we weren't able to, uh, to unfortunately speak with um, carers first today, who are also our commission service um, in Haringey who provide information and advice, but their role, so Amy and Jano, I think are on the call today, but I think, again, it just represents, we've got a huge plethora of organizations and support out there. What this strategy is helping us to do is to, is to bring that together. Um, so, so thank you to, to everybody who's spoken today. We are running a little bit towards the wire, but it's really important, I think, um, if we can spend, if people can stay with this for, for another five minutes, um, that we just go out and ask if there's any questions to any of the people who have been on the on the call today um, from from those of you in the audience. Um, and uh, if you want to put that in the chat, or you can raise your hand, and between Daria and I, we'll try and uh, manage that. I'm not going to say we're going to succeed at it, but we'll we'll give it a go. So, any questions, please. So I can see Angie's got her hand up, which is great because there's a little finger went up there. <laughs> Hi Angie, do you want to come in? You need to come off mute. You're still on mute, I'm afraid. <laughs> on mute, yeah. 
Uh, yep. Hi. Um, yeah, it was actually um, a, a question not um, for the last presentation, but can I ask a question regarding um, the, uh, the director um, of the adult um, care, Beverly? To Beverly, is she still Beverly's on? Beverly's still on the call, yeah. So, yeah, she is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I'd really like to find out, um, on your presentation, you were saying about Connect Communities. Um, during the pandemic, as a tenant advocate, another one of my hats that I wear, that um, we had problems um, trying to do things and, and, and connect with you and connect with the community, with um, the community connect um, telephone, etc. Um, is there going to be more finance put into it um, because of obviously the ongoing COVID nineteen? Um, and the situations um, going through the borough. Is there more finances going into that, please? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, hi. Thanks very much, Angie. Uh, so, as I said earlier, Connected Communities uh, was a real stalwart in terms of our response to COVID-19. It is an area we uh, firmly recognise that we need to expand uh, throughout the borough and to continue the work that it has been doing. I'm sorry that you had problems actually getting through to them. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure that um, we can look to see how we can uh, make our sort of contact more accessible. I understand Florence is on the line. We're happy to take that away if you are still experiencing challenges. But just to confirm, we are very much uh, committed to uh, continuing connected uh, con communities and its expansion in terms of our borough response. Great, okay, that's good to hear. Thank you. Thanks, Angie. Thanks, Beverly. Um, have we got any other questions? Um, either um, raise your hand. I can see a couple of questions. So I'll go to Stephanie on her iPhone, then Sharon, and then Professor Carverwell. Thanks, okay. Stephanie. Hello. Yeah, I thought I'd ask the question as opposed to typing things on the presentation like I did earlier. Sorry. Um, just a quick question because so be, I'm a carer but I'm also a governor of special needs school and I rep, I'm also a trustee in a special needs charity and this this co-production you know co-producing your partners this is this is great hearing this sounds absolutely amazing but as Beverly was saying earlier at the moment and I'm looking at my notes um, things have been very disjointed so I feel that even though I'm quite well informed I there's a lot of these things I, I didn't know. So I'm just wondering how this great strategy is going to be, um, you know, uh, transmitted. Because I think a lot of the parents I deal with don't, don't really know about this strategy. And I think it's amazing. So I was just wondering what your strategy is to, to, to you know, have the whole borough know about it. Absolutely. I think it's a really important question. And maybe I'll, I'll pick that up. So you're absolutely right that we're at the beginning of a journey. I think one of the things that we've absolutely got to get right um, now we've done all of this work with carers is how we communicate that out to all of our communities so people understand the commitment from partners around this that they understand that actually this represents uh, our aspirations going forward and that what we're going to do is to develop that in partnership with carers and our partners to make that reality. Um, we are uh, releasing some sort of press release at the moment to try and flag that up. We are using Twitter and uh, Instagram to try and uh, reach a wider audience that way. Uh, and we will continue to use partner organization uh, websites similarly to, to make sure that, that they understand it. Um, so I think that you're right. People don't understand or have an appreciation of it at the moment, but I think they, they will do and we'll continue to test that with our carers uh, working group similarly. So we make sure that carers really understand that we're getting that out to community. Okay, that's great, thank you. And then I think it was Sharon, was it Sharon next? Do you have a question, Sharon? Okay, I do. Um, hi everyone, um, my name is Sharon. I am a relatively new carer um, and I live in Haringey. I think it was you, John, that you mentioned that there were a number of carers that had not yet been identified. Um, and I wondered what the strategy was in place to kind of like engage these people. 
Yeah, absolutely, and I, and I think um, one of the key things about the strategy, and I think we've, we've definitely mentioned, is, is that sort of all of our partners who uh, are coming together on this, who will on an everyday basis come into contact with carers, but actually carers quite often won't identify as such, so they won't necessarily see that they're a carer. What they'll see is that they're just supporting somebody that, somebody that they love, and that's exactly what they want to do. But actually what we want to be able to do with partners, so for example, with our primary care colleagues, so doctors, um, is that actually when people are going to the doctors and they highlight that they may be supporting somebody in their family, that the doctor helps them to recognise, and that in this example, that they, ha that, that they are a carer, that they're entitled to a carer's assessment, um, that actually as a carer, they, they should be keeping a particular eye on their, not only their loved ones, um, health and care needs, but also their own health and care needs. And I think that sort of care as assessment opportunity means that then you get uh, access to all the information that we've been talking about today. So I think sometimes when people get to adult social services, it's a little bit too late. So what mm. we definitely need to recognise is that it's an, at an earlier stage. And obviously we want the general public to understand that actually if you are in a caring role, you have the opportunity to have support. And I think Dari is gonna, gonna jump in here as well. I was just going to also add that one thing that we're keen to do also is to share carers' stories so that other carers who have had very similar experiences can, can recognise themselves in some of those other stories. So a little bit how Angie and Claudine so, talked so powerfully this morning. So carers who are here and who are who would be perhaps comfortable to, to, to talk and to share their carer story um, perhaps in the form of a, a case study or a, or a quote or a little snippet that, that tells others what your journey has been like, do feel free to get in touch with me and we can, we can kind of, we can incorporate that into our comms campaign as we go to identify more carers. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you, Sharon, and thanks, Sarah. Yeah, it's really important to make it real for people, isn't it? What, what, what that literally means to be in a caring role. Um, Councillor Culverwell, you had a question there. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, this is for Linda uh, Ro Rowlandson. Earlier on, she spoke about abusive and difficulties arising as carers. Now, I wasn't too sure whether she was uh, uh, telling us that carers can be abusi abusive and that, that difficulties do arise. Are, are these things sort of uh, in any way looked at or are they told or are they analyzed or anything on them? that makes it maybe easier for whether a carer is a relative or outside person to try and understand these issues. Sorry, was that, was that a question directed for um, Linda, Linda? Yes, yes. Um, um, Eldridge, I, I don't think that was me. I think Kelly, I think it was Kelly who oh, okay. talked about uh, abuse in terms of okay. citizens advice. So it might be better if Kelly answers. Okay, fine. Yep. That's fine. Can on the call do you take it? If not, I can um, respond. I yes, yeah, sorry, I missed I missed the question. Could you repeat it for me, yeah, please? So Councillor Carvalho was uh, was just uh, highlighting the extract you highlight, you mentioned around sort of carers sometimes being in abusive situations. Could you elaborate on that and and uh, from your perspective in terms of the support that the citizens advice might provide obviously reflecting that if there's any safeguarding concerns that should yeah. be coming to the local authority um one of the most common features that we see is people who are in an abusive relationship with the partner and is caring for another person um and it's used as a form of control so they can't go out they can't do anything um they can't leave their partner and they're told that they're worthless We've also seen uh, a number of clients who've got mental health problems, who physically assault um, or are or, or verbally abusive to the person they're caring for. Um, um, typically what, I'm, what we find is that a lot of the people who are in that situation, they don't recognize themselves as being um, victims of um, abuse. Um, it's part and parcel, they blame the illness, they blame the disability, um, or they blame themselves for whatever has happened. 
Um, there is support that's available. Um, people can become, uh, you know, we can help them apply for um, uh, eviction orders for the abusive partner if they need to st stay in their home because it's been specially adapted for disabilities. We can help support them, get them in touch with organisations that can rehouse them um, and put them into specialist um, housing. Unfortunately, because of the nature, it often is takes longer than it would do with um, somebody who doesn't have the extra responsibilities. Um, but one of the biggest um, issues we have is getting people placed into refuges because they won't take males over 16 over a certain age group. Um, so sometimes it, it will force the family apart and a parent might not want to leave an adult, a younger child um, in the household with an abusive partner. So there are lots of different steps and lots of different protections in place. There is safeguarding issues and um, we do take that into consideration whenever we're actually making a decision. But we work with the person to try and find a solution for them as an individual and in their circumstances rather than a one size fit all strategy. But, uh, sorry, can I just uh, ask you another question, Kelly? What... Okay, can, I just, can I just step in? So we are, so the room will disappear at midday. So, so what I'm going to suggest, because otherwise we'll all disappear and we won't have had an opportunity to, to, to say thank you um, to all our participants. So what my suggestion, if it's OK, um, is if there are sort of any outstanding questions, if you put them into the chat function, what we'll do is make sure that um, the right person answers the question for you. And we will send that out and around to everybody who's been part of this call. Um, so you get a uh, get a response to those questions. Um, if you find it difficult to put it into the chat, then please do uh, email Daria um, directly if you have her email address. Um, I just wanted to, you know, personally thank you. I know all our participants today have, have thanked you for being here today and for all of those who have contributed to the to the development of the strategy. I think it's, and I hope you found it as exciting an interesting uh, journey as I have. Um, we will obviously be developing uh, the action plan associated with the strategy. And I think this is even more exciting. So actually what we get to do, uh, we're at the start of that journey is to make that sort of vision and aspiration a reality over the next few years. And we want you to be part of that um, development and part of helping us understand the improvements that we're making. So thank you very much again. Um, I hope you have really peaceful, restful rest of your day, and um, we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. And bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Good. 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 Hi, Claudine. I've got. I um. Thanks for posting the questions. I, I I've taken a copy of the chat and put it into a word document. So, um, any questions that we missed in this last session, um, we'll we'll make sure to pick up afterwards. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.